I have so many young women that watch my videos. Yes. And uh, if you have a message for young women, what would that message be? And I always change the statement and say young women and men. Okay. And say, guys, believe in yourselves. Believe in yourselves, have dreams, but pay the school fees for the dreams. Because a lot of them is like, oh, I saw some big American somebody who made it at 25 or at 27, so I'm going to make it. You know, a few people make it. Most of us, we do it the long way, step after step after step. So be prepared to actually put in the school fees. And the school fees is go get educated. Hmm. If you didn't, your family, if your parents didn't manage to get you educated, well, then make sure that you do get yourself educated. So it's not always about a degree. It's about, am I going to be an, a craftsman, an engineer, um, a cook, uh, whatever? But at least have what my mother used to call a certificate for life. Because mm. most people just want to say, oh, but I've got my brain. We've all got brains. But what is your certificate for life? What gives you the confidence? when you come and talk to me, when you come mm. and talk to somebody else, to say, I've got this skill, but please give me the opportunity to grow it. So I would say, first of all, please guys, get your certificate for life and you know, believe and invest in your dream and work hard. Whatever job you are at, give it your best because you don't know what doors are going to open as a result of that. How are you all doing? Don't you think I'm looking so fresh this morning? Thanks to MK Clothing, man. Um, you know what? It always feels good to wake up in Africa. It always feels good to wake up in another African country. Everywhere in Africa is home for Africans. So if you are tired of Ghana, jump on Ethiopian Airlines and find yourself in Zimbabwe. If you are tired of Zimbabwe, Maya, Maya, Maya. Akume. Get yourself fast jets and you will find yourself in South Africa. Go there and tell them that you are not a foreigner in South Africa. You are an African and Africa belongs to Africa. I found myself in this beautiful, exquisite, simple and luxury hotel right here in Victoria Falls. This is Siota, your highness. Thank you. And please, do you need anything else? Has the queen arrived? And you know what? There are so many hotels and resorts in this place. But it's shocking if I tell you that it's hard to find a black-owned hotel in this place. But where I am right now is the first ever female black-owned hotel in the whole Victoria Falls and a story like that I always ask you for a favor like this video is very important to me and share this video so that so many people will be inspired because we need so many of you to invest in Zimbabwe whether you like it or not this is your country and it's time for you to invest in Zimbabwe and no no even if you're not Zimbabwean and you get inspired with the story that I'm going to share today bring that money and come and invest in this beautiful country. Are you all excited to see the woman behind this exquisite hotel? This Bano is a celebration of my family clan and what we have achieved together. Because it's almost like saying, I can't be who I am unless I've got people behind me who are supporting me. I spent a night in here and I felt like a king without queens. That is the only thing that was missing. Next time, when I come here, I'll come with a queen or maybe queens. You've done something that a lot of people say it's impossible. Mm -hmm. Do you know that? Yes, I know, but you know what? It is possible. You can see it for yourself. You're here. This is Mbanomena Hotel, built from scratch, from virgin land to a five-star boutique hotel. And I did it. I don't like the fact that you said boutique hotel. It's boutique luxury hotel. Okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> because I, I spent a night in here and I couldn't... Listen, let me tell you something. When things are done by women, mm -hmm. they make sure that they take their time to get the best out of it. Yes. 
I I'm so proud of you. I are you from Zimbabwe? Yes, I am. Born and bred in Zimbabwe. But you look like a Ghanaian woman, though. <laughs> Actually, when I went to Ghana, my first time, people were saying, you could be one of us. So I think I'm just an African. <laughs> I love that. So you are an African, I'm an African not woman. an African. Have no. you heard of this word before, African? I've heard about it. I don't believe in that. I'm an African woman. I mean, tell me, um, as an African woman, what makes you feel so proud to be an African woman? I'm one of those I've never apologized for my identity. I was born black. My whole life is black. <laughs> and I am African. I am as black as they come. And I've lived in Africa all my life. And I've worked in Africa. I've got my children. I've got my grandchildren. I've got my business. I'm a proud African woman. Wait a minute. You, you never left the continent, Africa? I only went for a year to study overseas, but the rest of the time, my whole career has been born and bred and executed in Africa. So, which means that this hotel that we're seeing right here, everything started right from the R continent. Right from the continent, yes. I've been, and I'm one of those, through my career, because I've been in tourism, I've traveled to over 20 African countries. So I've also got a serious taste of Africa. And, um, you know, for me, it's about Yes, I'm an African from Zimbabwe. I've lived in South Africa. I've lived in Kenya. I've actually traveled, like I said, East, West, North Africa, Southern Africa. I'm fortunate. She's I'm a made in Africa product. Yes, I am. <laughs> My name is Matifadza Martha Nyazema, uh, born and bred in Zimbabwe. But like I said to you, in our African culture, you can call me by my first name. So the best you can call me that I allow you to do is either Mama Mati or Dr. Mati. I prefer <laughs> Mama Mati. <laughs> so Mama Mati, yes. um, you're born and raised in Zimbabwe. Yes. And what, I mean, can you tell me a bit of um, your childhood like in Zimbabwe okay. growing up? Very simple childhood. I'm a bit of a township a child, so a townie. Uh, for my generation, uh, mm. grew, grew up in the, t you know, the township that used to be called Harare, that is now that where the name of the, the city was taken from. That's where I grew up. My father was a, a school headmaster in the area and my mom was a nurse. So a typical working class home. Mm. I've got, I'm a one of five children. Uh, so I've got four siblings, three sisters and one brother. Um, so really just a very simple childhood, went to school, primary school in, in town, at, uh, in, in Harare, then went to boarding school, a Catholic boarding school, which is missionary school, which is okay. very typical for my generation <laughs> as well, uh, for my high school. And then my first degree, which is political science, went to the University of Zimbabwe. Okay. And then that's where I was lucky that soon after that was about the turn of independence. So I ended up going to Nairobi, to Kenya, to the University of Nairobi. Wow. My first postgraduate was from University of Nairobi, worked a little bit. My second postgraduate was from the UK. That's when I left the continent. That's the only time I've ever lived outside the continent. Hmm. And then my PhD was from Stellenbosch in Cape Town. So all my education has mostly been from Africa as well. Take a walk with me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so my very first job was just as a journalist, actually. Oh. Um, just very briefly for two and a half years. But you know what, with a, being journali a journalist, you still use it throughout the rest of your life. So it's this, the skills have helped me even in everything else I've done. But then I joined tourism and I've never left tourism. So my passion is tourism. My life has been tourism. I've actually met the, uh, I would say I've met the tourists in different capacities throughout my career. Wow. So first of all was destination marketing where I was working for the National Tourist uh, uh, Development Corporation. Being a pub just a simple PR or taking people around the country, going for shows overseas mm -hmm. and saying, come to Zimbabwe, come to Zimbabwe, come to Victoria <laughs> Falls. Um, then after that, I joined a hotel group mm. uh, where, I was, where I was in sales and marketing within a hotel group. And okay. thereafter, I worked, I worked for an airline, uh, British Airways. Uh, so I, so that, and I really say that's really where my international career took off. Okay. Um, so I was sales manager Zimbabwe within months, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Malawi, hmm. within 15 months, East and West Africa. And then that's when I came to your lovely country, Ghana. Oh, wow. Uh, I, used to, I was actually responsible for the sales team across the whole African continent because I ended up being area marketing manager for mm. sub-Sahara. Mm. So I traveled to Ghana, to Nigeria, to Seychelles, Mauritius, Kenya, Uganda, and also everything else in between.
between. So I, I've had a lovely, rich career, I must say. Mm. So I did seven years with British Airways, came back, and part of that, I lived in Zimbabwe, then I went into Kenya, then I went into South Africa. So not only was I working Pan-African, but I was also living Pan-African. Wow. Um, so, you know, I, I'm, like I said, I've really had a very fortunate career. Um, then from there, I was MD of a hotel group here, based in Zim, but looking after three African countries, which, which was now Zimbabwe, South Africa, Botswana, and we even opened a new hotel. That was my first time, first foray into opening a new hotel in Namibia. Oh, wow. um, with that hotel group and then it left them and then joined another big hotel group in South Africa and that's when then the rest of my career prior to this was. So I was lucky that I was witness and part of the discussions. I was there when those conversations were happening, wow. interacting with the team, contributing to the team. So when it then came, so I, this was 16 years of that, of which also part of the time, I was also the CEO of the Santon Convention Center hmm. in Johannesburg, which is one of the biggest convention centers in Southern Africa. And there, separate to my interactions within my hotel group, I'm also exposed to the high-end clientele because, you know, when you're in a big um, international convention center, it's everything from, I always talk about it, I met Oprah within the first three weeks of arriving at the convention <laughs> center, tick. Um, but I've met some big celebrities, whether in sports, whether in music, whether in entertainment, whether politicians, whatever. So I think that was all building blocks coming to what we have today. So on the one hand, I'm actually meeting with the type of clientele that I'm now trying to target this discerning high-end traveler. Mm. But at the same time, I'm actually having 15 years of lessons of how to build a five-star hotel. So at the end of it, I'm like, guys, I, I think I know what I'm doing. I think I know where but to go. Did, did you quit that job? Yes, I did. I quit that job in 2016 to start this project. So I... The <laughs> Wait a minute. Don't go too far. Yes. You quit a well-paying job just to build your own hotel. Because, you know, it comes a time in life where you're saying, I've done it all. Not all, but I've done enough. I must say, I, and it's a lesson for even, I think, you know, some of the younger people who are listening, because I grew up in an environment where it was risky to go into business. I think it still is, but there was a genuine, oh my God, can I do it? Because I remember even a cousin of mine 15 years ago saying, you know, you should set up your own thing. And I was like, oh, I'm very comfortable in corporate. You know, I know I get my salary every month. I get a check every, I get a company car or a company subsidized car or whatever it is. So it was nice and comfortable. And then, but you do then, I, the day just arrived for me. I wish it had arrived 10 years earlier. And I, so when I talk now to the younger people, I'm like, please don't wait until like what I did. Do it when you're 30s and you're four, early 40s so you can actually start and have this career because now the world has changed. Mm. So, yes, I quit my job, but looking back, I should have quit 10 years ago. I could have done this 10 years before. But, you know, life is what it is. The universe came together when it did come together. Well, when you were quitting your job, no one ever told you that. Is everything wrong with you, though? I can tell you now when I decided the biggest question was more coming back to Zim. Um, and so when I, was, I saw this place, like I said, it was virgin land, I'm buying land, now I'm doing the, the due diligence, which was a lot. You have to go and say, what, how, do you, how do you even start the process of building a hotel? And the guys who were meeting me are people who had seen me in these 15 years of a high, high, end, you know, you know, high job. And the, several of them said to me, are you mad? Why would you quit your job where, you know, we would see you there. We were so proud. We've got our Zimbabwean here who is working in this lovely job in the middle of Santon. And now you want to come and build in Zimbabwe? You want to come and... What's your story? I mean, but, but, seriously. But, but, but why, not, why not Zimbabwe? <laughs> but I think it was just the best one can ever do is to stay outside the country and, and thrive. I even was a runner-up to Businesswoman of the Year South Africa in 2011. So I was even recognized in that environment. Mm. So I think that's, that's the thing. And it is something I've had to answer a lot in the last um, two years. People have been coming here, especially mm. Zimbabweans in the diaspora. Mm. And really, I must say kudos to them. They've supported me a lot, and even Zimbabweans right across the country. Um, but the one question they ask me is, how did you do it? And almost that transition from 
you've got a comfortable life outside of Zim, mm. and now you're coming and you're investing. And I'm saying to them, it's possible. It is possible, I, it's I, I'm doable. I'm also here and I'm saying that, how did you do it? <laughs> of everything else were to do with hard work. I mean, it's serious, serious hard work. I know you asked me where this brick came from, I will tell you. I will not just tell you that it was from Wange, I will tell you the company from Wange because I was personally involved. They may have been a contractor, they may have been whatever, but this was my project. And I never let go and say somebody must take responsibility for my projects. I actually used to feed the people who used to do this and I say, I don't care what your boss is giving you. I know you are an African man, you need food. I, I won't even tell them, I know that you probably left home this morning without eating because wow. you can only afford one meal a day. Wow. So I will make sure that, I am telling you, I bought the pots. I bought and I was feeding these workers to make sure you work. So when I come to you and say, do this path well, guys, do it for me, do it this and that. At least I've got that loyalty. But to get back to your question, I think it's, um, it's really about just the hard work. But there had also been some school fees I had paid. So I told you about my career. I just didn't wake up one day and I had money in the bank. Hmm. My husband didn't wake up one day and he had money in the bank. Hmm. We invested because we knew that we had a future that we want to build for our children and grandchildren. So I think that's the other thing where people think, oh, she must have a bank full of money or something. No, guys, <laughs> this is part of what I saved from my pensions, from my bonuses, from making the right investments as we were going along. My wow. husband was a wow. chairman of an, a, a big um, Zimbabwean uh, cell phone company. We saved. We invested, we made the right decisions. So by the time we got this piece of land, and we were able to buy it because we had these investments. But even they were to sit and say, okay, you bring this and you bring this, you bring this, because we are not millionaires, we're far from it or whatever. So I think that was the first thing. But through my career, I knew that um, if now that's where this uh, 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 corporate experience comes mm. in mm. to say, if you're going to start a hotel project, don't start by saying, I've got this wonderful idea uh, and I've got this little bit of money, but everyone else bring the money. The investors want to see what have you brought in? What, what sacrifices are you making? So they could see that I've said, and, and also how do you remain in control of the project? Yeah. So the one thing was I knew the land don't bring in any other partner to begin with. Because then once people start, because, and we had offers as we were now doing the projects to say, oh, but why do you need the land here at a hotel here? You do the management of the hotel, give us the land, give us the buildings. I said, uh, uh, I've been around the block. I know exactly where the power is. Mm. So I'm going to stay in control of the land. Wow. I'm going to stay in control of certain aspects of this journey. And yes, obviously, then you start getting partners, etc., etc., mm. investing coming in. But so there was that. We had done our school fees. We had raised some money, some savings to be able to start off. So it wasn't just I just walked into Vic Falls and I said, oh, my God, I can, I've got money. I can buy this. We sacrificed. Mm. It took us almost a year to just pay off the land. And we had to borrow one or two bits here and there. But also I could borrow because I had a good bank record. Mm. I had a good, you know, my bank, I've had the same bank, you know, here and there with the same people for how many years? So that's, that's, I'm just saying this, this school, that's school fees. Because people just think, oh yeah, now I've got this wonderful idea. I, I, I knew who to go to, to help me to now put the whole idea together. Because I had that experience to say, find the best interior designer, mm. find the best hotel developer find the best X, Y, Z, invest in your relationships. Mm. Because that's the other thing as well, even as I was doing all that starting point as well, it's about, you know, I'd been out of the country almost 20 years, but I could walk into Harare and go into this office and this office and this office because I didn't burn my bridges. I still, just because I'm out of the country, it doesn't mean I don't have networks here. Mm. It doesn't mean I don't, I, mm. I don't have friends anymore. Yeah. And then you sit with those friends because they know better than you do. Exactly. And they tell you, by the way, this is how things work. This, you, you better go to this, better go to this. Yes, mm. it was a struggle, 
I mean, I always give an example one day, just get, trying to get some legal paperwork done here in Victoria Falls. And I had this incident where someone says to me, go and stand outside in the, in the sun for 30 minutes, just because they can. And you know what? I went and stood outside in the sun. Because for me, it was like, yes, my dear daughter, that's how you're treating me, it's fine. But I know the bigger picture, you don't. Because it's almost that like, there was, you know, there was a lot of, like, almost what, where you came to earlier, that disbelief to say, you, you think you can open a hotel? Who the hell are you? Um, you know, you're just some African woman and you're talking about building a hotel and opening a hotel. Are you mad? And this same, are you mad story came through even the banking institutions. It's all well recorded. Every bank in Harare, I went and presented. Every, in, in the end, I would even, it got to the extent where I would even say, guys, I've got a project <laughs> I want to present to you. If you don't like it, please just come back and let me know. Don't keep me hanging, because that was the worst. Zimbabweans are very polite people. You know, it's, it's a nice thing that we have. So, so then they, they would not say no, they'll just keep me hanging. So in the end, I would actually say to them, please, here's a project I've got. I know it's ambitious and I'm asking you, please come in and be my partners. Please come and fund me. But if you look at it, even if you say from the first go, this woman is mad, we don't want to know anything about you. Please send me an email tomorrow or when I call you day after tomorrow, tell me. So I don't waste your time and I don't waste my time because I don't want politeness that borders on incompetence, because that doesn't help me. How long, how long did it take you to build this place? Uh, three years. I love the fact that it's um, built in its natural form. Yes. Together with the trees. Yes. I feel like no trees were cut down in here. Only two trees were cut down in the whole construction, but what we even did at the beginning, we actually got, did a topographical survey. Mm. We brought in an expert who came and identified every large tree of a certain size on the property. And I've still got that map. And there were like 80 massive trees, another 100 whatever smaller trees. Or, so we knew where every single tree was. The buildings are not in a straight line by any chance because it was like the buildings must accommodate the, must accommodate, you said the trees belong here, you building, <laughs> come and fit yourself around. <laughs> so, so that's how we built it. Everything is about leave my tree alone, you come around and build whatever you need to do. So literally everything you see here, this is the natural vegetation that we found here. How many units do you have? The rooms? So altogether we've got 18 luxury suites. Okay. Um, so it's all back to, in sets of two back to back. So at any one time, you've got total privacy in your unit. Mm. There are 19, um, 90 square meters of, of space, of living space, of which 45 square meters is veranda and 45 square meters is interior. Purely because again, the star, so it's 18 luxury suites plus one private villa. I'll come to the villa just now. <laughs> but talking about the suites, um, it's already for that high-end discerning five-star customer. It's about luxury living, but effortless luxury is the way I would put it. Um, because we're not trying too hard. Yeah. We know the likes of you, my friend. You've got better things in your home than yeah. we'll ever give you. <laughs> and what we're saying is, but you now you're coming for the African safari. Yeah. Now you're coming to enjoy the best of what Africa has got. Yeah. So we will make you comfortable. We'll give you the little things that we know the modern traveler wants. Mm. So when you get into your bedroom, there's space, because this is Africa. We, we celebrate space. We celebrate the blue sky. Mm. But your bed must be the most comfortable bed. Mm -hmm. We'll give you the mosquito net so that you're safe from the little mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. But we'll give you the internet access. We'll give your, whether you bring an international, whatever you call them, USB from Europe, from Americas, whatever, we've got a space for it there. We'll give you a coffee um, making machine and a kettle because we, say, we cater for the type of coffee lovers, yeah. but we still also cater for those who want to still make their own coffee, coffee and tea. Yeah. So there's a lot of attention to detail to say, what makes you comfortable in this space? What makes this a living space? So that you, know, you come and you don't have to worry about the basics. 
it's all there. But it's in very simple furnishings. You see simple cement floors, mm. simple walls that are whitewashed. How do you feel any time you walk in here? I think now I'm calm. I remember sometimes, like especially 2020, because I opened just before 20, you know, the COVID, and I would sit on the veranda and say, did I really do this? <laughs> but the, the biggest one that I can quote you was my mom. So she came earlier this year. She's 80, 89 years old. My mm. mother's turning 90 in December. We've got a big party for her here. Yeah. Uh, just we'll, we'll do it in January, unfortunately, because we've, we've got to make money in December. Then we'll do the party <laughs> in January. But she came, and it was the first time coming after it was finished. But she's one of those very, very strong women. And she, so I said to her, we were sitting now at one of the verandas, and she was like, wow, I can't believe you did this, my daughter. I really can't believe it's come out so beautifully. And I said, Mama, you know, the tragedy of it is people don't believe I did it. It's, it's like they're trying to find, there must be someone somewhere, you know, it can't be you, you know. And, she, and my mom says, well, if I wasn't your mother, I wouldn't believe you either. <laughs> <laughs> This is supposed to be a love nest, but for you, I'll stand out. Mother, mother, son, love nest. <laughs> you know, when, when, when I came here last night, I was so sad. Mm -hmm. The fact that I came here all by myself. And oh, yeah. I'm I like, know. this is not a place to come alone. I, see, I'm giving you so many secrets today, and make sure you pay for it. When you're coming here, don't come alone. Because, I mean, knowing that you're spending time with a loved one here will be one of the best moments ever. I agree completely. And I can tell you, seriously, it actually has happened where um, when normally people come even with a business meeting, mm. they'll phone from their room to mm. their wife to say, or to their partner <laughs> and say, my goodness. And seriously, they'll actually come back. We actually have had that. Then six weeks later, we'll be like, do you remember me? I was here six weeks ago now. Because it's almost like, I need oh, to share okay. this. Yeah. You've got to see this. So it's beautiful. So which means that I, I'm coming back. So you're back. coming back, yes. I'm coming you back. are definitely yeah. coming back. Yeah, you're definitely coming <laughs> I'm back. I'm coming back. Yeah. I, I, I want to know, um, I have so many young women that watch my videos. Yes. And uh, if you have a message for young women, what would that message be? And I always change the statement and say young women and men. Okay. Um, because I've got two daughters and two sons. So I'm, I'm a, 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 mother, a mother of equality. And mm. I do know women have been disadvantaged. Mm. But I think for me, it's about the African child. And say, guys, believe in yourselves. Believe in yourselves, have dreams, but pay the school fees for the dreams. Because a lot of them is like, oh, I saw some big American somebody who made it at 25 or at 27, so I'm going to make it. You know, a few people make it. Most of us, we do it the long way, step after step after step. So be prepared to actually put in the school fees. And the school fees is go get educated. Hmm. If you didn't, your family, if your parents didn't manage to get you educated, well, then make sure that you do get yourself educated. So it's not always about a degree. It's about, am I going to be an, a craftsman, an engineer, um, a cook, uh, whatever? But at least have what my mother used to call a certificate for life. Because mm. most people just want to say, oh, but I've got my brain. We've all got brains. But what is your certificate for life? What gives you the confidence? when you come and talk to me, when you come and talk to somebody else, to say, I've got this skill, but please give me the opportunity to grow it. So I would say, first of all, please guys, get your certificate for life and you know, believe and invest in your dream and work hard. Whatever job you are at, give it your best because you don't know what doors are going to open as a result of that. And I always believe, like I mentioned earlier, don't burn bridges. Even if now you have to move on after two years, after 18 months, after three years, mm -hmm. keep a, a, that's already your network. Keep that network. Even now, when I'm doing this, I'm getting people who are saying, we last spoke in 30 years ago, but I'm coming to your hotel. We last met at high school, I'm coming to your hotel. Because the world is such a small place. So build networks as you go ahead. I think talking about the African people, that's where I've found sometimes we lack. We've got family networks, but we're not building business networks. So we need to build this, and business networks start at 16, at 18, at high school, at whatever. So they must build those networks. And then, you know, like I said, prepare your dreams. Some people are lucky, they can 
by age 25, 30, I mean, I've got a son like that, he's like running places, they can get high quickly. Others take a bit longer. So mm. if everybody's got their pace, mm. but believe in yourself, mm. believe in Africa, believe we can do this, that your skin is not a disadvantage. It is actually the best asset you've ever had. Believe in Africa, but Africa don't believe in us. But you are part of the solution. You are part of that Africa solution. So yes, there'll be one, two, three who don't believe in Africa. But we, if we start that revolution, which is what you're doing, of actually saying, guys, this is us. Let us believe in ourselves. Let us build for ourselves. There's a story about my, my grandson, where, who said, I heard him saying to a friend, Oh, my grandmother owns Banomena Hotel. I was embarrassed first. I was like, oh my God, I must just <laughs> shut up this child. But you know, I said to myself, what a profound statement. Because I could never have said that. My children can never have said that. What our grandparents invested in us was education, mm -hmm. was, the, was morals, mm -hmm. was um, ethics, was standards, what we call in Southern Africa Ubuntu, mm. just being respectful and human being. So we must not lose those values because mm. some societies don't have them. We've got them in abundance. Mm. You know, that's why I said to you, you can't call me, you know, uh, yeah. Mati. You must call me <laughs> Dr. Mati or Mama Mati. Yes, but the younger generation, my, what I'm, the, so, the seeds I'm sowing is that my grandson already at six years of age is thinking, I can own a hotel one day. And the more we can have of those, and also help the ones who are struggling and actually saying, how can we help to build them up? And, you know, we were talking together with the, earlier this morning with my marketing manager. And we're saying, let's invest in more training for our staff. Because some of them come from different backgrounds. They have not had the exposure that we have had. Yeah. They've even never been outside of Zimbabwe. Yeah. They've maybe never even been outside of Victoria Falls. Mm. How can we empower them? So within their own space, they actually start creating something, something. bigger for themselves and for their children as well. So, yeah, it's a long journey, but we'll do it. We have over 4 million Zimbabweans living outside the country. Yes. Um, do you think you have a message for them because you're once like them? <laughs> I think I've already touched on it because I've straddled both sides. I've lived outside the country and I've lived inside the country. You know what? It's possible. It is possible. I built this from scratch. I tell you I know where this chair was bought because I was there. I know where that cement came from because I was there. I know where that light came from because I, mean, I was there. And there is no substitute for hard work. And there is no substitute for doing things the right way. So it is doable. The Victoria Falls is not for someone else or someone else. It belongs to the country. So does the whole of Zimbabwe. There's a lot of um, negativities attached to Zimbabwe to the extent that the uh, diaspora don't even want to feel so proud that they belong in here. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know that. Like I said to you, I believe in solutions. Not the problems. Not problems. I am the solution. So are you saying that Zimbabweans are the solution yes. for Zimbabwe's problems? Zimbabweans are the solutions for Zimbabwe. So are uh, Mozambicans the solution for Mozambique. And, you know, I, people don't believe when I say this. This is an $8, $8 million unit, give or take. Uh, to, that's what it took to build this thing together. 90% of this money came from Zimbabwe. Yeah. So which means there's money in the country. There's money in the country. It's got its issues, whatever. But you know what? I said, give me a lemon. I'll make very good lemonade. Yeah, I won't make lemonade. <laughs> I'll make strawberry <laughs> out of lemon. <laughs> but but that, that is the thing, because I think that there's a lot of, oh, but I can't uh, do this. It is so difficult. Yeah. I mean, this wood came from the Eastern Highlands. I don't know if you got to the Eastern yeah, Highlands. I've not yes. been there, but I'm going there. That's where this wood came from. And when I tell people, they're like, really? So which means they everything, I everything was built yeah. from... Wow. The, the, the physical structure, some of them, the fen nice furnishings are imported. But literally, anything that you see is the physical structure. Zimbabwe. It was difficult. 
Because now it's saying, how do I get this food from the Eastern Highlands? Mm. You know, then the con contractor tells me, we have to do this, we have to do this. I said, yes, let's do it. The bricks came from Bulawayo, 500 kilometers away. The, this and that. And, but it's doable. Mm. And even under any other circumstances, even if you were to go and try and build a hotel in Cape Town today, mm. or a hotel in Nairobi or whatever, or in Ghana or in Accra yeah. or whatever, you still face challenges. Exactly. There's nothing that's going to make it easier. Yeah. Construction is, if construction was so easy, everyone would do it, <laughs> you know, but you've got to do it. Um, and yeah, it's My doable. My final question, if you had a chance to change one thing in Zimbabwe, what will it be? I think I'll change the milk that I drink every day. <laughs> because, I, yes, I know you thought I was going to say something profound. No, I've got nothing to change. Things can improve. There's always room for improvement. But you know what? I go back to my statement. You are the solution. So I want fresh vegetables for my hotel. Please give me fresh vegetables. I want fresh mushrooms for my hotel. Please give me fresh mushrooms. I want to taste, I want my guests every Sunday to eat the trout from the Eastern Islands you're talking about because mm. that's trout country. And it was, even if you look at my notes from 2017, I was like, every Sunday they'll be eating trout from Nyanga. I've not achieved that. <laughs> I want to achieve that. But I want to achieve it because it's easy to go and get that trout. Wow. So th there's a lot that needs to be done, but we are the solution. And let's get on with it. I want to say thank you so much for talking to me, and I really okay. appreciate your time. No, thank you. <laughs>